All right, we're going to look at some physical and chemical properties of hydrocarbons. So let's start with the physical ones. So boiling point is a good place to start. So what I've got here is a little picture that shows the number of carbon atoms. So we are increasing and we've got temperature, which is increasing in this direction. And you can see that our, as one is going up, the other is going up as well. So as chain length increases, so does boiling point. And why is this? Well, when you get your longer hydrocarbons with like seven and eight, uh, what happens is the hydrocarbons are able to sort of interact with each other. So that picture, that's a hydrocarbon. And then his buddy is, uh, you know, right there beside him. And remember that when you've got even a molecule that's nonpolar, it, there could be some London dispersion forces, which causes a, a little bit of a dipole. And so they are going to have some attractive forces for each other. So the longer the molecule, the more attractive forces they are going to have for each other. Um, one other thing about boiling point too is, and I want to compare isomers. So we've got C5H10. So there are three isomers here. We've got pentane. 2-methylbutane and dimethylpropane. So let's notice with our, our straight chain alkane that we have a boiling point of 36. Once we start to add these branches in right here, right? It's not straight chain anymore. There's your branch. The boiling point is going down. And then when we have a bunch of branches, our boiling point drops even more. Well, what's going on here is that uh, the more branches you have, the less the uh, intermolecular forces of attraction are going to be for each other. So again, it's like the branch chain ones you know, they just can't pile on like that last picture, you know, with, uh, say, we had a second pentane, you know, it would just be able to fit perfectly there. There'd be some attraction between the two molecules, and that would uh, take more energy to tear it apart, so you'd have a higher boiling point. Once you start getting these branches, they don't quite lie perfectly together, and so there's a reduction there. Melting point. So melting point is in blue here, and it is got a little jagged, but it is steadily going up as well. So as chain length increases, so does melting point. Density. So we've got our uh, chain length increasing here. And look at the numbers. They are steadily going up, almost each and every one. Looks like we do have an exception there, and that's chemistry for you. I find there's always one exception when you're looking at stuff, at least one exception, maybe more. So as chain length increases, so does density. So to summarize our first three uh, trends, as the chain lengths increase, all three trends increase as well. That should be easy to remember. And lastly, solubility here. So here's our picture. We've got polar water and we have a non-polar uh, cycloalkane here. And you can see there's a division. So they're clearly not mixing. They're immiscible. So hydrocarbons are non-polar. Let's don't forget that. So they will be immiscible in polar solvents like water. In other words, they do not mix immiscible. All right, let's talk about the chemical properties now. Combustion. So all hydrocarbons are flammable and burn readily, and they have a little uh, combustion equation. So you're going to take your fuel, which is your hydrocarbon, and in the presence of oxygen, you light a match. It will make carbon dioxide, water, and energy is going to be produced as well. Uh, E for energy. Let's look at uh, creating some balanced equations. So that'll be our kind of our first step. Combustion of pentane. Pentane, five carbons, 12 hydrogens. So that's your fuel. So let's add our oxygen. Let's add our carbon dioxide and let's add our water. Now it's about balancing. If I was going to balance this one, I'd say, okay, there's five carbons there. I probably need a number in front of the carbon dioxide and it's a five. Then I'd look at the hydrogen. We've got six and a, and a sorry, we have 12 and a two. Answer is six. And then it's about counting up your oxygens. Don't forget, we've got oxygen in both molecules here. Five times two gives us 10 oxygens, and six times one gives us six. So we actually have 16. So what number uh, multiplied by two will give us 16? That should be eight. Now, these don't always balance so nicely. Combustion of hexane kind of looks the same. All I did was add one carbon. The equation is the same. Balancing starts off pretty pretty clear, and in terms of our oxygens, we should have 12 there, and now we have 7 here, plus 7, that equals 19, that's an awkward number. So what uh, times 2 would give us 19? Well, it's actually, we can do a half number here, you can go 9.5. Some people will say then you need to double everything, double all the numbers, by the way, that's a 1 in front of the, the hexane there, double all these and you'll have your correct answer, but the half method is fine, so sometimes you'll need a half number there. 
substitution reactions if you play sports volleyball soccer they make substitutions for players and that's just simply players are switching in and out and it's a reaction where two atoms are switching spots so we've got a methane and a chlorine so what's going to happen here is our chlorine it could be that chlorine is going to switch with any one of the hydrogens let's just pretend those two are switching they're going to switch spots we're going to have two products we're going to have a chloromethane and we're going to have hydrochloric acid so when you uh when you do a substitution reaction they're only going to be able to be done on our saturated hydrocarbons make note of that yeah, and you can only put one of these chlorines or whatever you're putting on on at a time one at a time the addition reaction these are going to be for unsaturated so our double and triple bonds and uh, what we're doing is we're adding something across that multi bond and the multi bonds getting reduced I mean if you've got a triple bond it's going to get reduced to a double bond and a double bond to get reduced down to a single bond kind of one step at a time and so unsaturated gets converted to saturated and here's kind of a general version so you can see that our x has gone to that carbon and the y has gone to that carbon and our double bond is broken it's down to a single bond so hydrogenation is the name when hydrogen is added to a molecule so we've got a propene and we've got a hydrogen so in one another way to think about it is it's h with a bond to another h so you're going to put one h on that side and one on that side and you get propane now this one has a triple bond and it's actually got a two in front of the hydrogen which means there's going to be two moles of hydrogen uh, reacted so it's like having two of these h dash h things and the way this one was done they were obviously while well, we're taking a triple down to a single i might have done this one a little bit differently i might have made this into a double bond like so and only used one mole and then added that second mole here and then gone down to the single bond like that that's probably the way i would have done it two equations and here's kind of another example of that so we have a double bond and you're adding your two moles of hydrogen in and uh double bonds are all gone you're down to single the cyclohexane now there's one complicated thing that we have to talk about here so a hydration reaction adds water across a multi-bond we need to remember that uh, we've got hydrogen and OH going on here. So again, this molecule here is HOH. So we're going to break the double bond. We're going to have one hydrogen go on that side, and the OH is going to go over to that side. And we're going to get that. In terms of naming this one, this would be, pardon my writing here, that would be ethene, that would be water, and then this would be... Um, a, a couple of different ways you could name this one you could name this one ethanol that would be one way you could name it um hydroxyethane i don't know i like that one personally now we're going to look at one uh, interesting case here and that's well what if we could have several possible outcomes so we've got a propene here and what we're going to do is we're going to add hydrochloric acid so really you know it's about this chlorine right here because it could go to two spots it could attach to that carbon or it could attach to that carbon so we could have two outcomes we could have a one chloropropane where it attaches to the outer carbon or we could have a two chloropropane where it attaches to the inner carbon and we need some kind of rule to break the tie which is correct maybe they're both correct while well, one's actually more correct and this is markovnikov's rule so the rule states that when you're adding a uh, protic acid hx to an alkene the acid hydrogen and this is the important part here gets attached to the carbon with more hydrogens on it so the hydrogen is going to go to the carbon with more hydrogens on it so if we look here this carbon has two hydrogens that carbon has one and the rule is telling us that our hydrogen is going to go to the carbon that has more so it's actually going to go to this one so in fact it is this result which is more correct and this one's kind of correct it's like a minor product this is the one we go with.